Hi guys and welcome back. Well, if you can see a fox, that can only mean one thing. Oi. We're out after foxes. Tonight I've got my 243. I'm going back to the cattle farm for some unfinished business. There's two fugitives over there that I saw last week whilst I was out on my 22LR and they both got away. So we're back over there tonight. It's a fantastic clear moonlit night. Full moon, it's gonna be a bit of a frost. So get yourself a coffee, join me in the shed. I'll see you there in a minute. Well, welcome back to my shooting shed here at the cattle farm. Uh, and you may remember the last video I did, which was rabbits and rats. And that odd fox was um, shot here and uh, a fox was actually shot out in this meadow out in front of this field um, where I'm sat now. There's a fantastic full moon which has just come up and on the horizon it's about two feet above uh, the hedge where I'm looking directly in front of me so it's going to be a nice bright evening. Uh, one of the two foxes that I showed in that last video has been found dead on the side of the road just over to the left of me here so that's obviously accounted for one of them. So there's still one at large. Now I did have a close encounter with it. Um, I came here a couple of nights later, put the caller out and I was conscious on keeping an eye on the sheep that are over in this left hand corner. When I came back to look at the caller, there was a fox sat right by it. Now that caller is a hundred yards out from where I am. And from that caller out to the end hedge is 145 yards. And in the time it took me to find my remote control, turn the caller off, pick up the rifle, that fox had gone. So less than two seconds, he had cleared 145 yards after realising he'd been duped by an electronic caller. So it's just gone about 10 past seven. It is now dark. I've got the caller out there. I'm just going to sit for about 40 minutes and not make any noise, not put any sounds on it. Just see um, if anything does show up. There's still some sheep over in the far left hand side, but they're only they're fenced off by an electric fence into about an area of about 20 yards wide, but the full length of the field. So there's there's always that enticement of a bit of sheep muck, um, what have you, so. It's like everything, you just get yourself ready, sit and wait and see what happens. So hopefully, um, we'll see you later on. There's, that's a little muntjac. He's come through that gate. Looking in, let's just have a quick look around, see if there's anything else that's snuck in. So, coming up after this, uh, this was over at the shooting ground last week. They're 21 yards away. I was there after foxes, and they never moved all night. Hey! That one's just, I heard a, a vixen squawk over to the left hand side of me and then right over at the front, the other side of those trees, I could hear that strange noise that cubs make um, and whether they were sort of communicating with each other. Now that one is 84 yards away down there and um, so she snuck in from the right hand side. So it'd be interesting to see if it is a vixen. So I'm going to finish my cup of tea that I've had on the go and then um, I'll put the caller back on. I've had a um, dying hair call because there are a few hairs on this land so it's quite relevant. So dying hair call. Um, so I'm going to leave that to go for another 10 minutes, finish my tea off and then go and see what we've got. But I'm going to hazard a guess it's a vixen. So I'm fortunate to be able to give uh, shooting lessons at the Oxford Gun Company and this is Sona, uh, and that is seven shots through the same hole. So she's going to be coming fox shooting with me. This one's come in, same place. This was two minutes after Oi. the first one. 
Took him off his feet. I'll just put the cooler back on, had a sip of tea, noticed uh, the heat source in the side of the hedge, put the cup down and there he was halfway across that field. It's just, it's absolutely amazing how fast these things can travel. So that's fox number one there and fox number two. Don't be alarmed if you can hear a noise in the background sounding like screeching. That is not the audition for this year's Eurovision Song Contest entry from Great Britain and that is the sound that I've been using it's called Hair UK and it's on my Fox Pro caller I will put the details of that in the description of the video uh, with a list of the equipment used tonight right let's go and pick them up well there you go you can see it there um, the number uh, 42 Hair UK number one uh, it obviously worked tonight it's the first one so the caller you might just be able to see the light Right there. So let's just turn that one over because there's a bit of a bit of a hole in that one. So that's the first one, that's the dog fox. That was the first one shot. So that's the 84 yards, so the second one is over there. Let's go to get that one. There's just a little bit of frost starting to come down on this grass now. I was bound to get that with a clear sky so the moons oh, this one had a bit of a dance around this is a big one that is a big fella another dog so another dog with a great big hole in the side of him and they look quite mature ones as well so and the farmer's going to be very happy about that so there we are it's he is a big old boy, that fella. So that's him, second one. And the... Brilliant. Right, let's get these tidied up. We about might even have his tail, because it's a nice tail on that one. So I've left the rifle unloaded. Uh, obviously I go out on my own, so I don't have somebody to do the filming for me. So I've been out, um, check that first one out. Pick him up. If I have had some scales, I would have weighed him because he was heavy. And walk back now to the first one, uh, which I thought was a vixen. And I could say I thought it'd be a vixen, but they were both dogs tonight. That one I've got now was quite a mature male, probably two or three years old, looking at the state of his teeth. Um, he, he wasn't a youngster. And on the way back with that now, um, they will be left for the farmer in the usual place and I guarantee I will get a message in the morning from him saying thank you. That's the one good thing. Um, I do these services for the farmers and they really appreciate it. So they are, I've done it in black and white obviously because there's quite a lot of claret around. Now I like to think that I try to keep in touch with uh, the subscribers that are kind enough to write in to me. I will always reply to them. Um, I, I think it's quite important to do that and also if people ask questions to uh, answer it to the best of my knowledge. Now I'm no expert in doing this, I've, I've been shooting for a long long time um, but only sort of the last sort of 18 months have I been pressing a record button on these scopes so um, it's all still quite new to me um, and I do owe a great big debt of gratitude to Robin at Team Foxer for helping me get started off on this um, this whole thing. Uh, so as I speak to Robin two or three times a week, um, sharing bits and pieces and sort of just generally sort of larking about. So Robin, in all sincerity, thank you very much. And uh, I'll make it up to you in a couple of weeks time when I come to see you for uh, that fox shooting session that we've got planned. Uh, one of the other um, quite important subscribers to me is a chap that uh, I've written to and he's written back to me. Um, we've even got each other's phone numbers now, so we ring each other up. Now this chap's called Jim Harris. He lives in South Carolina. And normally Jim is one of the first people that writes some form of witty comment or something after a video. Up until about three weeks ago. Um, and you may remember there was a lot of tornado storms uh, on the coast of America. Now Jim's in South Carolina and was right in the path of that tornado. So. Of course your mind starts thinking over 
no message from Jim after that video. Well, that was a bit strange. So I sent an email, didn't hear back. Sent a text message, didn't hear back. Phoned him up and left a message on his phone, didn't hear back. Now it was only a couple of nights ago. I was actually driving to Oxford and the phone rang. Uh, Munch was with me. And uh, it was a great big um, mound of relief to hear Jim's voice. Um, he was okay. Uh, they've managed to escape um, any sort of uh, disaster where they were. I think they'd gone in into a bunker. And uh, that uh, him and his family are all safe. But Jim got in contact with me today to say that um, he'd shot his 500 squirrel uh, in his back garden today. So, Jim, that's an absolute epic task. Well done, mate. And uh, on behalf of everybody here, uh, I think you're absolutely amazing. Um, you're not a young chap. You've had a few more birthday cakes than I have. I, you obviously don't mind me saying that. But um, absolutely brilliant. Thanks ever so much for your support. And everybody over there in the States, I do appreciate it. Um, keep writing in. Uh, let me know what you'd, what you'd like to see and uh, we'll try and do our best. But obviously nature uh, has the governing um, stick on this. If they don't want to come out and play, then we can't do anything. So, uh, Jim, I should raise my glass of tea to you. Thanks ever so much and uh, take care, everybody. Uh, I'm going to sit here quietly now, just turn the cooler off, drink this and then just see if anything else pops up. So I uh, might see you later on. Cheers, Jim. Well, I sat there for another 25 minutes and decided that was enough. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, please click on the subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video soon. In the meantime, cheerio!